The worst. Shooting those hood videos, bro, with having a bunch of guns just being pointed at you. And, and yeah, East yeah. Orange, you know, in the hood, bro, it's like yeah. I'm there with thousands of dollars of gear. Like there's yeah. like 30 of these guys pointing guns at me and my friends. Yeah. We're in their apartment. That's not a good situation. Sometimes it's like the artist might not have the budget to execute certain things. But, you know, if I believe in them, I might put some money into executing that vision because I know that it's mutually beneficial. Yeah. The low budget Easy people have the most expectations. The people who pay serious dollars have the least expectations because they trust in your vision i would rather just a flat fee honestly if it's something that i'm passionate about i don't want to be recording and jotting down these amount of hours to actually execute the final project if it's something that i genuinely care about i'll put as much time and effort that it takes to actually get the project done Yo, yo, what's going on, world? It's your boy, Poncho, here. Welcome to episode 39 of the Encore Podcast. If this is your first time listening, this is a pod for artists, musicians, anyone with a passion for music and art that's trying to take it to a full-time business. So if that's you, subscribe. Tap in with the fucking community. I'm here today with my co-host, Cruz. What's up, Poncho? Gang. So today we're here with Matt Connolly. And I, I promise you this is actually one of my favorite conversations I've ever had off camera. We were talking for like an hour and a half before this, and I was just picking his brain, and I'm very excited about him. He's the founder of the Creator Club. Blouse, and which is a full service production company anything that you need I'll, I'll let you do the pitch but i'm just gonna say that very talented very well spoken and has so many dope conversations to have about the music industry thank you so much for joining us matt what's going on guys we're here <laughs> matt here yes <laughs> we're here how are you feeling today great how yeah. are you guys i'm good life is good can't complain. Yeah, bro. Thank you so much for joining us today, bro. I'm very excited. You want to go real quick, just what the Creator Clubhouse is, what you do as a creative yeah. and as a business person? Yeah. So just to give you a little bit more insight on about Creators Clubhouse, we are a full service production house located right outside New York City. We're about 15 minutes north of the George Washington Bridge. And we pretty much offer in-house services such as photography, videography, uh, video editing, graphic design, web design. And we also do set design as well. So it's pretty much an all in-house uh service production company and yeah that's what we got going on wavy okay bet all right so um in just a few minutes could you tell the people uh where you were born where okay. you grew up and how you got started working in the music industry okay so i was born in suffer new york um okay. which is in rockland county so it's not too far from where i grew up which is in palisades new york um and then I got into the music industry because I was actually away at school and I had a final project, which was create a music video for one of my production classes, right? So that was our final project. We had to create a music video from scratch using another artist's song and just like doing a, a video remake. So I was able to use that. And then I showed that to local artists that I went to school with that were from the city and uh, kind of just went from there, honestly. Fire. Yeah, it started all from just a school project. <laughs> yeah, damn. So, a real foundation on videography and telling people stories is how yeah. that came about. Like, that was your entry point into the music uh, industry? I would say it's more of just, like, I always was into video editing, right? Mm. So, I used to edit, like, Call of Duty videos at a young age when I was, like, 13 years old. I used mm -hmm. to make, like, Call of Duty montages and stuff like that. That's young to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. right? So, I was using, At like, After Effects and stuff like that, like, Sony Vegas. And when I was, like, 13 years old, it, was, it felt like video games because I was editing actual video gameplay and stuff. And I was part of, like, a clan and, and all that stuff. But uh, yeah. I used that. And then I was able to start doing my own little videos with, like, snowboarding and skating and then I was able to kind of just use all of that foundation to when I went to college, I was like, you know what? I know how to do this. So why don't I just try it out? A lot of friends influenced me to go that route. I knew I wanted to do something with business, but video production kind of just went hand in hand with it. Yeah. Damn. So as as a video in video production space, like how did your role as a video producer, editor, videographer, how did your role evolve into the creator clubhouse? Like how did that sort of transition happened from a creative into like, all right, I'm going to start really building a business around my brand. So I've always wanted to have kind of like that one stop shop type of feel, right? Because I feel like a lot of productions, they always have to outsource for things. So I want to just be that guy that everyone can rely on be like, yo, I know a guy to get this done. Right. So with that is pretty much getting like a facility and having different aspects to the facility that other people don't have. Right. So it's like things like the plexiglass platform or just 
creative direction. Flamethrower? A flamethrower, right? We got <laughs> yeah. a flamethrower. It's not a flamethrower, though. It's a prop. It's a prop. <laughs> it's a prop. Yeah. What is it called again? It's Well, they market it as not a flamethrower, right? But that right, it, like shoots flame flame. <laughs> it shoots flames. It shoots You know, it's a flamethrower, right? <laughs> so we got that. We have a bunch of other stuff, right? So it's pretty much just using that to kind of help other productions and everything to execute their vision, to make their clients happy, and just keep going with that. Wavy. I hope that answered the question. It, it did answer my question. <laughs> scaling like so as just a videographer that probably owned the camera had a good laptop how did you scale your way into having enough resources okay. to like actually own a full business yeah. and a platform like that to be a one-stop shop like at such an early age that's a great question so um i pretty much was able to use the foundation that i got from an apprentice so i had an apprenticeship right after i graduated college right so i was able to use pretty much what he was doing for his own business and implement that in my own way with my own creative spin to it, right? So I pretty much just followed a similar format as him. Uh, I felt like, you know, if it worked for him, why wouldn't it work for me, right? So then once I left working with him, I was able to start building my own portfolio. You know, I started with just like a little Sony photography camera. And then, you know, I was able to use that one video after another to keep building the portfolio, using as leverage to get a bigger budget for this uh, concept or whatever it is, right? So the biggest thing for me that helped me stand out was that I was pitching creative concepts to these artists and trying to get budgets to actually execute these things. So I was able to use funding to kind of help fund my business in a way so I can use these concepts to get bigger budgets to help grow my business to bigger Okay. Avenues. Huh. All right. So you would pitch a sort of treatment or treatments. So, yeah, exactly. Treatment so they're visual yeah. treatments, right? So it's pretty much like a mood board or just like a, a vision board. So yeah. the client Can knows. Can you explain what a treatment is? I, I want to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So a video treat, like, all right. So a video treatment is pretty much just a storyboard or like a, a layout of the course that you want to take for the video, right? So it could be either color designs or um, it could be like specific like snippets or screenshots from other videos that you're pulling as inspiration to execute the vision that you're trying to pitch to your client mm. to get the budget to actually execute it and, and everything. Gotcha. So that's usually what the labels do. They either hit you up and they send you a song and they're like, hey, like we have this song. We want it in this location. We have this budget. Send us a treatment by the end of the week. And they send that to like 20 other people and you may never hear back from them. Oh, yeah? So they give it to so, a couple people and you sort of have to win your spot as the person that's going to execute also, their vision. And like, they also cherry pick from all the different that? concepts and stuff that okay. are being submitted. Mm -hmm. So then they're able to make the best video possible. So if I'm an artist and yeah. I'm not huge, I'm not signed to a major label. I don't have people handling those conversations to you yeah. with for me. Um, if I want to work with you as a videographer or you in particular... Um, what should I have? A song. Ready. A, okay. song, a song and some ideas. Yeah. It makes it a lot easier to run with the ideas that the artist already has instead of trying to like come up with the way that the song made them feel and everything. Because when they're recording a song, they if they're an artist, they actually have to be able to feel something and even just see something. They may not be a visual person, but at least just have a feeling of just something regarding the execution for the video, mm -hmm. especially if they want to do a video, mm -hmm. right? A lot of artists don't have that. Actually, sorry. A lot of rappers don't have that. That's the <laughs> okay. difference between yeah. a rapper and an artist <laughs> is that, you know, a lot of artists, they can actually articulate and come up with like concepts and, and visions for their music. Is rappers, that something you see outside of hip hop too? Like do a problem artists, ar artists outside of yes. hip hop? Yes. So have. artists outside of hip hop are a lot more in tune with their um, music videos, I feel. Like really? they actually, mm -hmm. like I've worked with metal Not artists, surprised. I've worked with um, Latin singers, I've worked like even reggaeton videos. They they come correct. They they actually, like even a lot of the metal videos, they, they know what they want for their brand wow. and everything. Hmm. It, you know, it may not be uh, the most elaborate ideas, but at least they're willing to put in that extra step to separate themselves because they know that's what they need to do to actually make it in this industry that's so saturated. Interesting. So how do you balance, as a creative yourself, obviously, yeah. how do you balance sort of the artist vision and your vision yourself? Like, is that something you have to sort of feel out as a videographer? Yeah. And like, so there's a lot of times that there's like artists, they're like, yo, I want this scene at this part of the song, this there, this there and that there, right? So it's like, okay, so I, I have to go with what they want because at the end of the day, you want to make your client happy, 
right? But, you know, I want to add my own creative spin to it because, you know, I'm putting a lot of time and sometimes my own money into these projects to use them as a portfolio piece to get that bigger budget, mm, right? Okay. So sometimes I'm looking at this as an investment in myself. Uh, so you'll charge them X, but you might be paying even a little bit more than X or depending on depending the video, on, or yeah, you some, might not make sometimes any Sometimes it's it like, less. you know, uh, the artist might not have, um, the budget to execute certain things, but you know, if I believe in them, you know, I might put some money into executing that vision because I know that it's mutually beneficial for mm -hmm. my trajectory in my career and also for their branding. And mm -hmm. then also that shows commitment and that they're going to want to work with me because I actually care about the product that I'm producing Facts. with them. What do you I'm, do? I'm not just a videographer, you know, like I, a video producer is way different than just a video. A videographer just uses a camera. You know what I mean? They're, that's way yeah. different mm -hmm. than making what, what, like- What do you do when, you, when you're not feeling the concept from an artist? Oh, that happens a lot. I can imagine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that happens a lot. I mean, like I'm not at a point in my career where I can be really too picky. Um, you don't feel that way. Well, no, I'm not at a point in my career where I can be picky with the artists that I can work with, right? So if so if an artist comes to me and they have a, like a concept and stuff, like I would work with them to try to execute their vision, but I might not fully endorse the project as oh, much as I would with another oh, artist okay, that I'm okay, fully okay. on board with, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. it's still a reflection of my brand and everything, you know, yeah. and if I don't like the song it's going to be hard for me to want to get behind it and promote it and that makes perfect and then sense. put my name on it. There's a lot of videos that I've done that I don't put my name on for that reason. That it's nothing personal sense. to the artist. So if you're watching this, don't take it personal. <laughs> yeah. I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, interesting. Because that's more of the business side to it because it's like, I can't be cherry picking the clients that I have, right? Like at least in my current state. Okay. Just so artists know what to expect a little bit and to appreciate your role a little bit. I know your answer is, is it depends, but I'm going to ask you, how many hours do you say would go in behind the scenes of like after you shot the video, after that's over on your end, how many hours go into that? Well, I'm going to start with it depends. Yeah, um, <laughs> It depends on, let's say, the length of the song, the amount of scenes, and if they want a lot of effects or not, and if there's a storyline. Okay. I would say those are the main components when... Uh, packaging a product or a project mm -hmm. um but on average i would say 12 to like 30 hours to mm -hmm. edit it mm -hmm. wow. it really depends sometimes more than 30 hours like yeah, yeah. i couldn't yeah I could, I could not work on one project that long. yeah there's been I, projects yeah, 50 no. 60 hours Shit, you know, nah, but you know they came with the bag so it's like okay. it, look if execute. i spend more than an hour on a beat i'm pissed yeah. <laughs> i can't i couldn't be me. do you like peer review like in the in the editing space like if you're spending that much time i mean you might honestly i like to have the artist kind of involved with it too okay. so like mm -hmm. either i would invite them to the office and we kind of edit it together like i do a lot of the groundwork and then i kind of bring them in and i'm like hey like let's just polish this up right because mm -hmm. the worst part is the revision process like you want to make the client happy, right? But at the same time, I'm not going to break my back too much to do 10 revisions. It's like you have to cut it off at a certain point. So okay. it, it, it's a lot easier when you have the artist with you for the finishing touches. Mm -hmm. Or you send okay. them like a couple uh, updated preview videos and stuff. So then they're able to kind of mold it based on what they see, unless it's automatically perfect for what they want. You know, there's plenty of times like that too, where I send a video and there's no revisions, nothing. But then there's other times that they want this and they want that. And it's like, I'm not going to keep exporting this dozens of times just to make you happy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. th there's a that fine, there's a yeah. fine yeah. line with that. Foot down. Yo, uh, uh, I got one. Just as a, in a more general sense, um, what is, uh, what's some things that you wish artists would understand about what you do? I like that question. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So... <laughs> thought about that the, one for the a while. process is <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of work that's going on behind the scenes right so like even just to produce a video like let's say i'm producing directing filming and editing right there that's like five different hats that i have to wear right so it's like that alone i'm putting a lot on my shoulders and they have to understand that too and they can't expect that like i can only work on their stuff like i have other projects going on too so it's like artists hit me up and then they're like expecting, 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 but it's like, dude, like I'm one person. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have the full like uh, editing squad and 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 the, and the different departments yet. Like we have a bunch of in-house services, but like 
a lot of it's on my back mm -hmm. currently. Yeah. It's not always going to be like that because I, I, it's not sustainable. But um, I would say after you shoot, you get a text message being like, you edit the footage yet? It's like, yeah. it's like right when you get home, it's like, yeah. dude, I'm shot. I just worked like six, seven hours. The thing is with filming, it's a physical labor job, mm -hmm. right? So your it, back hurts, man. Yo, your the back hurts, bro. The gimbals light. are not light, <laughs> yeah. bro. Like the setup is 10, 15 pounds. I'm holding that for hours. Yeah. Like if the song's like three, five minutes and I'm doing a full performance take, bro, the biceps are <laughs> like about a burst. Like I, I wanted to hold a gimbal for like this weekend we were shooting a shoot, yeah. shoot series. I was like this for like, 20 minutes. I was yeah. like, ah, nah, I'm exhausted. Yo, yeah. Like you got, yeah, but I would say the, to, to really answer the question is that artists, they need to understand, at least if you're working with a videographer that has a lot of other clients, is that they, what's, it, what's, what's the best way to put it? They aren't only able to just focus on your project. You need to give them time to breathe. And as long as you're updating them on the status of it, I feel like you shouldn't be like haggling them and everything. That's that's like the biggest thing for me. Mm, that definitely it's makes over, sense. It's over expecting, especially yeah. when the artist has no budget and it's a low budget video. Those are the artists that are going to expect the most than the artist that's going to drop 50 grand on a video and wipe their hands clean with no revision. Yeah. There is a difference. Shout out, um, shout out Angelo who said the same exact thing on the pod. Um mm. Yeah, who's also a, a videographer? He's a, yeah, Got yeah, dude. Yeah, the director. the low budget he's people have the most expectations. The people who pay serious dollars have the least expectations because they trust in your vision. That is That's why they're sense. paying big money. Yeah. Got you. Quick favor. Can you make sure that's in focus? I know I lined it up, but like, I'm, you know when you I just, hope I'm not moving too much. Yeah, you know when like you just like can't fucking stop thinking about it. <laughs> Pretty sure it's in focus. Uh, Does it look focused? It looks focused to me, bro. <laughs> I'll do a little PTSD from shoots that get messed up. Oh, dude. Yeah, I know you feel oh, it. Oh, dude. Bro, I've, <laughs> I've lost thousands of dollars because I didn't back up footage. Uh, and I thought it was backed up. Cleared my memory card for my next shoot because I was running behind. Damn. And yeah, I had, had to tell to the artist and be like, yo, I'm going to eat the entire back end budget that you're going to give me yeah. just so we can reshoot it. Yeah. And we're talking yeah. thousands of dollars yeah. just yeah. so we can reshoot it, just so I can yeah. maintain that good just relationship. Uh, yeah, you you so ever hard. heard that quote that's like, um, if so you don't have it in three places, you don't have it at all? Yeah. Yeah. I, I learned that in college. Yep. I learned yeah. that. Yo, yeah. one time I... <laughs> My uh, laptop happens, broke bro. and my hard drive was in my car and my car door froze overnight because it was in winter. Oh my God. I lost both of them. Damn. God damn. Like, that's, when oh, I, that's, that's, when I, that's when I lost a hundred beats. That's when I learned. <laughs> yeah. That's when I learned. <laughs> I want to add, if we can find a way to add what he just said. There's no it. way possible I'm going to be able to edit that. So okay, but I, <laughs> I was thinking if I said, all right, it's, it's fine. What would you say the difference is in your experience between working with a bigger artist and like a more entry I have level that artist? Too. So, upcomers versus yeah. um, pros. Well, it's funny you say that. You would think that the pros would show up on time. They're mm. usually late. Mm -hmm. You would more late on average. Yeah, yeah. Don't let this make you feel like you. Can yeah, be don't. Late. Yeah, please don't <laughs> think like you good. Like you feel me? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. like the the pro artists, they have so much going. on. Like I get it from their perspective. They have so much going on, being pulled in ten different directions. They have managers and people literally doing stuff for them because they can't do it themselves, mm -hmm. right? So I completely get it. They're all over the place. They may not even know their own schedule. Um, but you know, they also have to understand that there's a lot of components going into actually executing a video, let's say, right. And if they show up late now, that's costing money signs, especially if you have to rent spaces, you have to pay crew members, all of those things. And, you know, they obviously just want to show up, get it done and leave. And then everything's all good for them. But, you know, there's a lot of other components that are going on behind the scene that they just aren't attached to. And it, yeah. it is what it is, but, um. So for up and coming artists, sometimes wait, I'm sorry. What was what was the exact question? What's the difference the, between up and comers versus signed artists, uh, professional artists? Well, that I, I feel like I, I answered that. I don't know. Like, yeah, for the up and coming artists, it's like it's a lot harder for them. Usually, a lot of the times they're independent, so they have to fund themselves. Yeah. So it's even just hard for them to actually execute certain branding elements, such as shooting a video or doing a lot yeah. of these other or things. Or having those, because they have to have those conversations for themselves, like the business conversations. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sure that's sort of. And a lot of these artists, muddy, they but... don't have the business mentality behind yeah. it. That's yeah. what I was about to ask. Like, I, I, when I had written the question, I was looking for maybe some mindset differences. Yeah, there is a big artists. mindset difference. Okay. Um, 
Well, at the same time, it's like when you're a bigger artist, you're kind of, and you're signed, let's say you're signed. Mm -hmm. Like now, like the label and people that are backing you are expecting you to do certain things. So now you're a machine in that way. So you might lose a lot of the creativity and they might be telling you to do certain things that might not actually be true to who you are. Mm -hmm. That's the big difference too. Okay. Especially if they are just up and coming in the sense that like they just got popular, Mm -hmm. right? But they signed away a lot of their rights and stuff like that to their music so they kind of lose a little bit more control over that aspect okay. um i would say that's a, a big difference between up-and-coming artists and just artists that are already like on i guess mm-hmm. uh there's just having the creative freedom that's okay. a big thing yeah okay. um i want to i want to pick something off i want to pick up on that conversation we had in the other room okay so in 2022 is the music video worth it in 2022 is a music video worth it uh, I would say yes. Okay. Most of the platforms that you will be promoting your music on are now video focused. Mm-hmm. They used to be photo, uh, photo focused, but now they're all video, right? Mm-hmm. Look at Instagram Reels. Mm-hmm. Like Instagram is a prime, prime example. They're trying to compete with TikTok because mm-hmm. they know how powerful TikTok is with their viewership and even songs that are blowing up on TikTok. It's like you have to make videos in 2022. That's what I mean. But like there's people like, who just straight, make like just music challenge. videos. Yeah, I'm talking like is it a better route for an for like youtube you're saying if they were just no no no, no, i'm not even talking about youtube i'm talking about for an artist to promote themselves right yeah when you have an option to shoot a music video Mm -hmm. there's also option to try and make a tiktok challenge or make reels or well the easy answer is they should be doing everything until something clicks and then when that thing clicks keep doing that because it worked okay like okay. if it works, it works. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, right? But you should be trying all avenues as much as possible. Obviously, if you're independent, you might not have the funding to do that. So then you're able to do more stuff with your phone. Get You have to get creative. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest thing, especially if you want to separate yourself as an artist from all the millions of other artists or even just the videographer's perspective. Like what are you going to do as a videographer to separate you and your work so you're able to get clients and more exposure yeah. so you can work with bigger people, use that to build a company. Yeah, going mm-hmm. that, that's that. everyone's goal at the end of the day is, you know, trying to become like the best versions of themselves. Yeah. So you have to do everything in, that it takes to make that happen. It's not going to happen by itself. Mm-hmm. That definitely makes sense. Okay. So obviously building off of that a little bit, um, recording artists are both creatives and business people, or at least they should be. Business they they people. should be. Yeah, they should be, they should be <laughs> they business should be. people. <laughs> They're oftentimes not. That's why you have to yeah. get managers and people that say that they are, but then sometimes get taken advantage of too. So that's a whole yeah, other conversation. That's, that's yeah, for another yeah, day. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> you, I get the feel from you just from having conversations with you, and just by knowing what you've created. You are obviously very business minded and business focused, but also a very creative person. So I'm I'm wondering if you have any tips for sort of balancing that creativeness in you, but also trying to make sure you're focused on developing your business at the same time. Like, yes, how do you approach that? That's a question for me. So there, there's a lot of times that it's like, I want to do a project, but it might not make sense financially. Right. Mm. So it's like, you know, I'll be honest, like I would do stuff for free if it makes sense. But there's other times that it's like I can't do everything for free because then it's like my overhead and everything like that isn't going to actually be sustainable for my business. So I guess like that's like a big problem that I've been dealing with is finding that fine line between wanting to do creative and fun stuff, but also making sure that you're doing it from a business mindset where it actually is justified for the growth of your business. So what would it be that would make you invest in a project or an artist? Like what it I it depends. I know that's part of the answer. But I can start with that. Yeah. <laughs> what would make you invest in somebody? Do a reduced price or put your own money into it a little bit or something like that if they have the hunger. Hunger is the most important thing. It's passion and all of that. Because it's like it shows that you're actually committed to wanting to do it. And if you have that that's something special and you need to keep going with that because a lot of people don't have that. Hmm. So you might not have the best talent, but if you have the hunger, that will always be talent at the end of the day. Consistency is everything. And when you see that, you're look, you would invest in that. I would. Okay. Um, I, I got one. I got one. Um, this is one of my favorite questions to ask people. And I, I ask it to people who work closely with a lot of artists. Another general question uh, what are some things that artists do that shoots them in the foot? It's one of my favorite questions that you, that you ask pretty yeah. consistently. They don't promote their music enough. It's like 
they post it yeah. once or twice and then they kind of just give up because it doesn't get the reception that they want. It's like, yeah. dude, you need to be posting that every day. Like, un- because the thing is, yeah, there's plenty of people that already saw it, but there's also plenty of people that still didn't see it. And that's how you're able to get the traction that you wanted initially. But then you gave up because you posted a few times and it didn't work out. But if you do that for the rest of your life, you're never going to actually pursue your dreams. Yeah. And the short form content too, I'm just noticing on TikTok, it doesn't matter how much you post. On Instagram, yeah. it matters a little bit more, but on TikTok, it seems like it doesn't really yeah. matter how much we you post. post. You just, three, every video has another day, chance yeah. that's going to get caught in the algorithm. So yep. yeah, it's so a numbers game. It's consistency. That. I think on average, like on Instagram, it's like 5% of your audience will see your post or something like I that. I think it was like, Whoa, I really? thought it was 10. It's five to 10, I think. I thought it was 10. Between there, God but damn. 10% yeah, yeah, based of your following. Of your, yes, of the following. Yeah, yeah. yeah, something like that. I yeah. think it's gone down. Like, and that's just time. based on the algorithm and everything yeah. because yeah. now it's more interest based because they want to keep people on the platform for longer. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. that's how they make money through yeah. sponsorships and everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. Because if people are scrolling and they're engaged with whatever's on their feed, they can throw more ads in front of them. Yep. And then that's how the platform actually makes money from yeah. people. And yeah, also, nice. you have to promote your stuff now to actually get more exposure than just generic exposure yeah. but yeah. that's also why they made the reels too because the reels is like the the boosted post you could say it mm-hmm. can automatically get picked up in the algorithm and it just uh-huh. be the wildfire yeah we get a lot of reels that, that that take off yeah yep. that's a fact yeah yeah it's pretty much just like their way to do like free advertising but it mm-hmm. also gives people incentive because they're like if this just blew up like I just keep, keep just keep doing it, and it, it will. Yeah, it's just working. Yeah, so I guess the creatives working, and it also gets people potentially just more engaged, like in general. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Did that the answer? We both just not for sure. Hmm. All right. So okay. one thing I know that you have it, this is a a little uh, left field question, but you have experience using peer space, and I know a lot of artists invest significantly in their equipment and just having a good recording setup in your in your home. Is that something that you would advise other artists to really look into? Like, if you have a good recording setup, like, can I just put this on peer space and like have a good result? Oh, uh, like depending. Well, so for peer space, like, are you talking more just for the recording studios or for like yeah, photo studios, and video studios? I guess. Recording studios a little bit, I guess. Well, because on peer space, there's you know there's event spaces, there's recording yeah. spaces, there's photo and video spaces. Mm-hmm. Um. Mm-hmm. I mean, so for the recording space, yeah, you know, if you have a recording studio and you want to get extra bookings and and stuff to help your business, yeah, I yeah. think that's a great avenue to explore. Yeah. Um, like for me, you know, I didn't want to just only rely on my Instagram to create like a funnel for sales, right? So it's good to have it on multiple platforms just in case if, let's say, Instagram vanishes tomorrow. Yeah. Like I'll, I'll be screwed. Mm-hmm. Have you seen that this the shit you sent me the Mr. B uh Mr. Beast interview about him talking about how TikTok's going to go down when YouTube Shorts starts paying creators? Uh, yeah, not and, familiar and with that. Yeah, they, I think they're already starting paying creators and really? it's just a matter of their UI isn't exactly where it should be is what Mr. Beast was talking about in that. Mm-hmm. So okay. it's like once they invest in their UI a little bit, um potentially YouTube would take TikTok's audience. First of all, they're they're not a Chinese company, so that that like the government could sort of just put put a ban on that like whenever that want. But um, as a creator, it might be in your interest to be able to be like on TikTok, you just got short form. You got one minute. That's how you're going to yeah. touch your audience. Maybe you got lives. But on YouTube, you could potentially like funnel people to like, all right, if they're really interested in a more in-depth experience with my brand, we could go to our, our uh, long form videos as well and just have a little bit more. Yeah, but it, it just goes to show that right. platforms can go away. Yeah, yeah platforms can go yeah, away. Yeah, for but, sure. Yeah. 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 And there's a lot of people um, like for Vine and stuff, that's how they got famous Oof. and then Vine yeah, went away. Yeah. 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 So then, you know. Yeah, some people made it, some didn't. Shout exactly. out like the DC Young Flies who figured it out, but yeah. a lot of people yeah. made it out. Um, do you want to hit? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So You know about a jar? A what? Our jar. Our jar. jar. What is What is that? What is that? a motherfucking jar, deep ass questions. Do I get to pick it? Do you want to pick it? Yeah. I, yeah. 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 All yeah, right. yeah. You could pick it. Pick it. You pick it. Yeah. Pick it. Do you want to read it or do you want us to read it? No, you can. Okay, All right. Ben. Put four on the table. We're going to ask four, four on the questions. table. Yeah. Bet. All right. One of these, we all have okay, to answer. Five. Okay, Ben. One of them, we're all. All right. All right. All right. This, is, all right this is the one we're all going to answer. <laughs> I'll go first. Okay. What is something you don't ever want to do again in your career? <laughs> I love the question. <laughs> Work hourly. I don't. I don't want to be working hourly. Hmm. Yeah. You know, Why? I've heard some people prefer hourly, and then others prefer 
you know, just a flat fee type shit. I would rather just a flat fee, honestly, because it's like, if it's something that I'm passionate about, I don't want to be recording and jotting down these amount of hours to actually execute the final project. If it's something that I generally care about, I'll put as much time and effort that it takes to actually get the project done. That's kind of mm. why I don't want to be like working hourly. Cause then I feel like then you're yeah. micromanaging your time. I don't yeah. know. I, then you might not be doing it for the right reasons. I was about to say, like, that, you know, it, it kind of equates to like engineers and shit. A lot of people who do work hourly they just want the bag. They don't give a yeah. fuck about the project. I love so. your answer, bro. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's, a, yeah. that's just like something that you're not going to get. One yeah, out of a thousand people heard. probably wouldn't say that. And it makes perfect sense what you're saying. So I love that about you. It really shows how passionate you are about what you're doing. So. Thanks, man. Yeah, for yeah. sure. I love this stuff. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah really. All right. Check it out. What environments do you thrive in and what environments are not ideal for you? Ooh. Talk about your, your office. I mean, I like my office. My office, I the thrive office in. Dope. <laughs> I thrive in that. I definitely feel very safe. Um, it feels like home for me. It wasn't always like that, but you know, definitely the more time I spent there, you know, I pretty much sleep on the couch most of the nights too. So it's like, you know, you gotta do what you yeah, gotta do, right, to make your yeah, dreams happen. So it's like uh, that, and then place that I wouldn't feel yeah, comfortable in, maybe like, a little struggle, like loud environments. You know, I like oh, more. Really? Yeah, like I kind of want to be able to hear myself talk. Um, I like mm. concerts for what they offer, but that's not where I want to be networking. Like I'd rather mm -hmm. get the person to my office and then talk to them one on one, so they actually mm. can get to know me on a personal level. Okay, mm -hmm. I definitely feel that. Yeah. All right, that's cool. Love that answer too. How do you define success, and how do you define failure? Wow, <laughs> that's deep. a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> goes <in there. laughs> how do I define success and failure? Okay, so. Well, I mean, success is based on your own interpretation. You know, some people's success might be greater than others. I yeah. guess it's based on what you're previously exposed to. Um, and I guess how much you believe in yourself, right? So uh, to that kind of answer, like... Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, yeah for sure. No, no, I mean, how do you... Want you <laughs> how oh, do for you? me? Yeah. Oh, how do I? So it was more of yeah. a personal question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more of a personal question. Can you say it again? How do you define success? How do I define success? Yeah. What's that? What's the W for for the kind of the creative? What do you What do you What's want? The, what do I want? The end? I, yeah. However you want to answer. All it. right. So I mean, like the end goal sure. for Creators Clubhouse. Yeah, is more so about having just a a community around you know creating dope shit like either in the music industry, just artwork, just like anything creative, right? So I want to be able to have like a fantasy factory type of facility right outside New York City. And be able to offer those in-house type of services for creatives. Mm. Wavy, okay. What would I, you define as a as a L as a failure? Not believing in yourself, or not uh, even putting the work in before you actually get anything out of it. Like it's like not seeing it through. Yeah, right. So it's like things don't happen overnight. So mm. it's it's through the repetition. It's through all of that that actually lets this thing grow into what you want it to be. Mm -hmm. So you can't expect stuff to happen overnight. That's not everyone's story. Mm -hmm. You know, like it might be two years for the one person. It might be 10 years for the next person. But it's like what I tell myself, I'm always one project or one video away from making things actually come to fruition. Mm. That's a fact. Yeah. Okay. All right. So was that better? <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right. <laughs> Yo, I've gotten like six spam calls today, bro. Potential spam. Uh, potential spam. Yeah. Anyway. All right. Um, here's a fun one. What has been the best experience in your career and what has been the worst? I would say the best experience in my career was being on uh stage with T Pain for a live performance concert. That was really cool. Mm. Um it was at Overthrow boxing arena in manhattan so okay. he was performing in a boxing ring wow. i never heard of that yeah, yeah it was a very small event it was right before he went on tour a few yeah. years ago um yeah. how'd you wind up getting that opportunity through a friend who i don't talk to no longer uh he knew uh the artist who was opening up for t-pain and that's how i was able to get on stage okay huh. yeah gotcha. Fire. Oh. what about the worst the worst you know, shooting those hood videos, bro, with having a bunch of guns just being pointed at you and like that. Oh, yeah, dude. Like, you know, yeah. in, 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 in East real. Orange, you know, in the hood, bro. It's like, yeah. that's not a comfortable environment. I'm there with thousands of dollars of gear. Like there's yeah. like 30 of these guys pointing guns at me and my friends. Like yeah. we're in their apartment. Like, dude, that's, that's not, not a good situation. But, you know, through those experiences got me to where I am today. 
So I'll leave it at that. Wow. There you go. Shit, that, I feel like that's not something that people Yeah, yeah ever, everyone's, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> everyone's seen the fucking memes of like the joke, like the video for ducking like the gun. Bro, it's serious, <laughs> yeah. dude. It's, it's dead I serious. I can imagine. Yeah. Nah, oh shit, bro. I never, yeah. I actually have never thought about it before. I've thought about it before. I've thought about that before. They're pointing a gun. Like it's like, I'm not sitting there going around each person being like, yo, you empty the mag? You empty the, like, like even if the mag's not empty, there's still be one in the chamber. You don't know. Yeah. So like if someone, says that they want to have a gun. I get it. It's good for a certain type of aesthetic, especially if you're that type of artist. I get it. It is what it is. I'm not going to promote gun violence, but yeah, yeah, dude, that's not a good environment those to be the, in, bro. Those yeah. videos you don't stay, stay away from that. But yeah. you know, it, when you're first starting, like I said earlier, you can't really pick, you know, your clients that you work with, you know, you just got to be happy with what is presented to you. Yeah. Right? So you have to do those shit huh. videos to get you to the gold yeah yeah huh. all right last one. Oh, this is for all of us oh my there. god oh bad question it's such a brutal question to end on how they answer it i'm not used to answering these when do you think someone should quit their music career <laughs> all right i'll give it give it 10 years if you really after, put it time, yeah, yeah. After ten years, you got to give up. Yeah, yeah. It, especially if you're funding it yourself. <laughs> yeah, you will burn a hole in your pocket mm. if you aren't able to actually see money being generated from your music career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, you have to be brutally honest with yourself. Mm -hmm. You might really enjoy it, but then it's more of a passion instead of a career, mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of self reflection to be able to acknowledge that and accept it. I hear that. Yeah. I mean, uh, what would you say? I'm going to say when you hate posting on social media. I mean, every, I'm not, honestly, not every. Okay. Okay. okay that, that's yeah, hard. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Let me, let me. It's more let of a chore backtrack. for me, me bro. Back. Yeah. yeah posting on Instagram is a chore. I have four alarms. One at 12, one at four, one at seven, one at 10 to post. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. 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 I'm going to go with. You've done it. I, I feel like you just know. I feel like you've done, or you should know, where it's like you've done it so much and you're just like not proud of what you have going on. Like when you've had so many conversations, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it's like. I can't tell you. I My opinion does not matter that much. I cannot tell you what it's like to be a creative and not like, I'm so used to like telling people what I do and people are like proud of what, like, uh, what I well, do. Because really what you're answer. doing is awesome. Not everyone it, does that. It's like a mix everyone of the is law an artist now, and bro. like art. So I have like a perfect balance of like, if I tell somebody what I do, they're probably gonna be like, that's dope. So I, I don't know what it's like to tell somebody like, this is what I do. And people are like, oh, but the thing is it, too, it's like, I mean? it's a lot easier for you to actually sustain that yeah. career because you actually can develop a business behind it. A lot of yeah. these artists aren't able to do, make that transition from it just being making music to actually, I'm a brand. I need to be able to generate money like all these other brands yeah. to actually make this sustainable. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. I guess my answer to that would just be when you're unhappy doing it, which is kind True. of something I'll face with producing. Um, when, yeah, I mean, if you're just not, because at this, look, it's hard to make a living in, in anything. It's a lot harder in the music industry when it's super saturated and everyone in the grandma wants to make it. So yeah. if you're not even enjoying it, adding on how difficult it is, that's yeah. that's what I would say. Music but also don't quit when crazy. shit gets hard. Yeah. Like that's shit is going to be hard to too. Uh, but it's like, it's this is the difference between like, there's a difference between like the struggle and the I'm fucking done. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. that's, there's a noticeable difference. You have that. to go through the low points to get to the high points. Of course. Like yeah. it wouldn't feel like good to even just only experience highs. Like you need to have the balance, especially like if you only experience highs and you're not going to be a humble individual, to be honest with yeah, you. Nah. Like that alone is going to screw up your entire personality because then you're going to be so like inflated and be yep. like, I'm better yep. than everyone else. It's like, no one wants to work with that. Yeah, mm -hmm. not So at all. I feel like the lows are what actually groom you as an individual and shows your commitment to actually wanting to execute this vision or dream. Definitely. I agree. Love that. Yeah. Shit. How you feel? Great. <laughs> yeah. yeah. This was Appreciate the you coming. <laughs> like informative interview that we've had. This is a dope interview. Yeah, I fuck with this. I'm happy with this. Thank you so much. Um, do you have anything you want to say to the artists that are gonna watch this? <sighs> Which I should look right here. Yes. Just keep making music. If it feels right, that means you're onto something. Um I know it might be hard, especially if you're an independent artist, to kind of keep funding yourself, but 
just know it's if it was so easy everyone would be doing it so just take that keep running with your dreams if you need content shoot me a dm at creators clubhouse new york I. new jersey yep. connecticut tap the fuck in tri-state area yeah. we got you <laughs> that's a fact so yo this is episode 39 of the encore podcast i motherfucking know you learned some shit from that so please tap in with matt tap in with us subscribe to the channel like comment all that good youtube shit um can you tell the people where to find you on social media you can find me on social media at creators clubhouse ny and also Connolly creates boom Yep. Bam. That's, uh, that's what it is. Yep. So thank you for watching. Thank you guys. We'll be back soon with another dope episode. Tap into what this man has going on. He's got three years from now. You're looking at the future right here. So yeah, tap yeah, in. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Woo! That was so fire. I hope you thought so too. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah nah, definitely. <laughs>